In this video, I want to graph a rational function, r of x equals 3x squared minus 3x over x squared plus x minus 12. And I want to do that without any graphing technology whatsoever. I just want to graph it using information about the intercepts of the function and its asymptotes. And of course, using multiplicities on how it behaves near those asymptotes. So taking our function, the first thing I want to do is factor the numerator, factor the denominator. To factor the numerator, we have 3x squared minus 3x. There's a GCD, a common divisor, greatest common divisor of 3x. Factor that out, and that would leave behind x minus 1. And that gives the factorization of the top, 3x times x minus 1. In the denominator, I have this quadratic trinomial, x squared plus x minus 12. Since the leading coefficient is 1, I'm going to look for factors of negative 12 that add up to be 1. You can take 4 and negative 3. And so the reverse soil would be x plus 4 times x minus 3. And so then analyzing this, what makes the denominator go to zero? Well, if we set the denominator equal to zero, you get x plus four, that, that could equal zero, right? Which would give negative four as a value. You could also have x minus three equals zero, which means x would equal three. So these are gonna be the forbidden values from the domain three and negative four. Uh, plugging those in would make the function not defined. It doesn't define that, it's not defined at those values. Now I wanna mention that this function right here is in lowest terms. It's in lowest terms. Therefore, in lowest terms, if something makes the denominator go to zero, that means it has it gives us a vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptotes of this function are going to be x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. Each of these factors shows up with a multiplicity of 1 in the denominator. So this tells us that since these things have odd multiplicity, we are going to cross infinity at these vertical asymptotes. All right, let's come and look at the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the things that are going to make the numerator go to zero. So if you have 3x times x minus 1 equal to zero, by the zero product property, we get x equals zero or x equals one. So we get these x-intercepts right there. Now, the same thing is true about their multiplicities, right? x shows up once, x minus 1 shows up once. So both of these x-intercepts have an odd multiplicity, which tells us we're going to cross the x-axis at that value. Now to find the, the y-intercept, we just have to look at r of 0. That's going to give us 0 on top times 4 times negative 3, which means our, 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 our y-intercept is going to be 0 as well. So this function will pass through the origin. Okay. The last thing I want to mention is about the end behavior of the graph. That comes from, We want to see what happens as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Well, as when it comes to the end behavior, I actually prefer that we look at not the factored form, but the multiplied out form, this one right here. Because in that situation, only the leading terms matter on top. So as, as x approaches plus or minus infinity, we see that r of x will be approximately the same thing as the ratio of its leading terms, 3x squared over x squared, which this simplifies just to be 3. This suggests to us that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. So y will approach 3 as x approaches plus or minus infinity. So we do have this horizontal asymptote in play. Now, whenever you, and so let, let's start graphing this information. Uh, let's start graphing this thing right here. So I'm gonna indicate for us the x-axis and the y-axis. Let me move that over a little bit, the y-axis right here. And so what information did we find? We found out that it goes through the origin, 0, 0. That was the y-intercept and an x-intercept. Um, it also goes through x equals 1. To give myself a little bit more space, I'm going to make this be x equals 1. This is 2. Uh, this is 3. So this is negative 1. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the y scale still the way it was, the, still the, the same way. Uh, no, let's let's still make it be a, let's still make it be 1 to 1 there. Uh, so we get, we'll make this be 1, 2, three, like so. Uh, well, the, the horizontal asymptote was three, so maybe I'm actually gonna change my mind a little bit. Let's just squish these things together. I think I can live with that. Uh, so this will be our x-intercept zero, and this will be our x-intercept one. Again, I can live with that. So what we discovered also, in addition to the intercepts, we had the asymptotes. There was a vertical asymptote we found at negative four. So one, two, three, negative four, right here. It's always a good idea to label your picture here, especially when you're bad at drawing like me. We're going to get x equals negative 4. We had another vertical asymptote at x equals 3, and that's why I changed my scale. Um, this picture would just be too big if I if I spread the scale too much. I just have to accept my intercepts are going to be a little bit close to each other. So we're going to get uh, x equals 3 in this situation right here. We also have this horizontal asymptote at, at y equals 3. So I'm going to put that right here. 
on the graph. So we end up with uh, y equals 3 as this horizontal asymptote. So this is information we have. We can start going from here, but there's one other bit of information we don't know yet that I want to know. So the thing I care about next is does my, does my graph intersect its horizontal asymptote? Uh, because our function can't cross x our vertical asymptotes, and that's because the vertical asymptotes live outside the domain of the function. But there's nothing that forbids a function from crossing its horizontal asymptote or a bleak asymptote if it has one. And so to determine whether we cross our horizontal asymptote or not, we have to solve the equation r of x equals 3. And so if we do that, we would get something like the following right here, r of x equals 3. Let's solve this equation. I'm going to clear the denominators. So you times both sides by x squared plus x minus 12. And if you distribute that, you're going to get, uh, you'll, so you know, you basically kill this part off right here, and you're going to get x squared plus x minus 12. Distribute the 3, you end up with 3x squared plus 3x minus 36, which there's a 3x squared on both sides. If you subtract 3x squared, it cancels off. So we get a negative 3x is equal to 3x minus 36. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. This gives us that 0 equals 6x minus 36. Um, if you move the 36 to both sides, uh, if, you, if you add 36 to both sides right here, you're going to end up with 6x equals 36. So divide both sides by 6. We end up with x equals 6. So what this tells us is that our function does, in fact, cross its horizontal asymptote. It happens at x equals 6. I'm going to add this to my function graph right here. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At 6, our function will cross its horizontal asymptote right there. Now, it will cross our horizontal asymptote, but this is the only place where we will cross our horizontal asymptote. So starting at the y-intercept, uh, what can happen? So I'm going to take my, my function, and I'm going to go to consider what happens at the y-intercept. Um, a couple things could happen. Well, we know, we know that our function... Because if this is a y-intercept, it's gonna have it's gonna go above and or below. It's gonna do one or the other. Now, because we have odd multiplicity, we have to cross at this moment. And we'll come back to that in a moment, I should say. Um, it's gotta go up or below. Well, if you go up, it's gonna have to go down through the x-intercept and cross the other side. That's an option. Or if it went down, you'll have to come and cross the x-intercept like that. Because again, our x-intercept at one. Um, it was a crossing. So we either get this a green picture or we got the yellow picture. Well, what happens with these? If you're in the yellow, if you're in the green picture, you're going to have to, you know, you have to go towards your vertical asymptote, um, which means you either turn down, which would give us an x-intercept, which we don't have, or you'd have to go up, right? And you have to cross the horizontal asymptote, which we're only allowed to do that at six. So it turns out with this green possibility, you get into a, a conflict. There's no way of fitting the picture together. And so actually it actually turns out this green picture has to be removed from consideration. So what this tells us is that our function at the y-intercept, actually it comes up and then it comes back down. That's what had to happen. And now with our picture right here, we either, as we get close to the vertical asymptote, we either turn up towards infinity or we go down towards negative infinity. But we can't go up towards infinity, same problems. We need an x-intercept we don't have, and we need to cross into the horizontal asymptote, which we don't have. So it turns out what must be the case is that we're going to continue on towards negative infinity right here on our picture. That's what's going to have to happen. Just by the you know, process of elimination, just pretend like graphing this rational function is like playing Sudoku or some other logic puzzle. We follow the rules, and we make the steps based upon the only thing that doesn't lead to contradiction. Now, as we approach this vertical asymptote, because we're touching infinity, we have to come back from the other side. So we our spaceship wraps around to the other side, like so, and then we have to go towards this. We have to go towards this number right here. Okay? Um, in which case, then our function, sweet, um, it, it's gonna touch, it, it, it's gonna, it's gonna cross our horizontal asymptote. So it comes back on the other side and then wraps around right here, like so. Uh, and so th this is what our picture is going to be doing. At some point, it has to turn around and come back towards this horizontal asymptote uh, that's in play. So this gives us the right side of the picture. What about the left side? Well, with our intercept here, the y-intercept is either got to go down or it's got to go up. But wait a second. We already know the multiplicity says it's got to cross. 
So it's got to come back over here. So then we're going to be below the x-axis. We have to approach either our vertical asymptote by going towards negative infinity, or we got to go up towards positive infinity. Same problems as before. We can't cross the x-axis. We can't cross the asymptote. So the only picture that's applicable is the one you see right here. At x equals negative 4, we're going to cross infinity and come from the other side. Um, this time, though, we won't cross the we won't cross the horizontal asymptote. We have to stay above it. And so we get this picture right here. Well, let's see how this compared to our computer generated image, uh, which you can see, I guess it's, uh, we can see it right there. Can we see both of these at the same time? Uh, there you go. And so we see the behavior we want. We see sort of like this bowl shape, concave down shape going on near the x-intercepts right there. Uh, there's some maximum that's between one and zero, but it's really small. Um, over here, we're going to cross our asymptote. We're below it, but it's going to bend back towards this. Uh, my bump is sort of too pronounced, but that's okay. At some point, it turns around here. And then over here, we have exactly what we expected to do. So, in fact, we did draft a pretty good rational function without using any technology whatsoever, just by looking at the intercepts and the asymptotes of the function.